Hey everybody, Jake Moran, Keller Williams, and TIG Realty. This video is going to be your guide to winning in the North Georgia real estate market in 2023. We define North Georgia as pretty much everything north of the perimeter, which is 285. And uh, if barring any uh, unforeseen uh, significant changes in our market, uh, we are we are back in full swing. If you're not paying attention, uh, the last six months has been kind of a roller coaster. Uh, the, the good and the bad is the Fed has done exactly what the Fed said they were going to do. Exactly what they said they're going to do for the last about 18 months or so. And um, my interpretation of, of our market in general is one, people still need to move. People still need houses um, that are not what they're currently living in. So sometimes upsizing, downsizing, uh, just geographic location changes, those are still needs. And the, the, when the Fed does what they say they're going to do, it gives people, even if we don't like what they're doing, it gives people confidence that they can forecast uh, what, what's coming in the future and, and make wise decisions. So um, we're going to go over three factors that you need to pay attention to. If you're not working with a real estate agent like me that's giving you this kind of guidance, um, you can always reach out to me via YouTube. You can find me on Google. Um, we will take good care of you. But I had a conversation this past weekend, and part of the, part of the reason that it's been maybe a month or two since my last video is, y'all, we have been slammed. Um, it, like it has been absolutely wide open bananas, um, and and we're grateful for that. And uh, if if you're uh, if you're one of our current clients, like we are with you one thousand percent. I'm not going and uh, making YouTube videos while you're struggling in the real estate market. So. Just know that's part of the reason for the break in the uh, video content. But three things you need to know in Georgia in 2023. So the first is a, a, a conversation I feel like I have almost every week with someone. This happens to be somebody that I know is an investor. Uh, they've got multiple investment properties in uh, our, our North Georgia area. Most of them are more in the, uh, the metro areas, so uh, down in... Uh, uh, and I don't want to get too specific here because I don't know the their whole investment profile, um, but it's south of us, let's say. So I asked him if he was looking to buy any other properties this year, and he said yes, and this, this is kind of what I'm looking for. And then I asked him a question, why are you, are, are, do you just like that area? Like, is that where you're comfortable in? Or are you looking at places that your money's actually going to grow um, more over the next five, 10 years? And I, his kind of response was, I'm listening. And so in about two, three, four, just like factoid bullet point nuggets, I outline what's like what's going on and what's growing and what's happened that's not actually, you know, behind the scenes stuff that's already happened that you haven't seen um, really take hold of in terms of the, the property values and appreciation and market growth. In, in in real estate areas um, that were north of where he was he was typically going to be looking, and my comment to him was, "Your money is going to grow a whole lot more in uh, what I call these emerging real estate markets than it is in these already established real estate markets." So your established real estate markets, let's just call that your metro areas. So uh, you know whether that's Fulton, South Gwinnett, Forsyth, Cobb, like some of those areas where uh, there's there's so much growth that's already there. Your prices are your demand is still good. So I mean, there, there's no problem there on demand, but your prices are a lot higher. And so if you let's say you had a million dollars to invest, you're only going to be able to invest that million dollars in so many properties down there versus taking that same pile of cash and going in what I call emerging markets, which are you're gonna be able to buy probably double the number of properties that you would with the same money, and that money is going to appreciate significantly more than it is gonna be in those markets where you've already got a high, high uh, sticker price. So the first thing is location. So obviously this is kind of the old adage in real estate is, Location, location, location. So what are the new locations? What are the factors that bring market growth? And I kind of compare this to uh, when when uh, Walmart, Home Depot, the big box retailers of the world, when they're going in and, and opening new stores, they're doing tons of demographics. They're, they know what's there. They know what's coming. Uh, they know how to forecast that because they've got a lot of, of, of 
you know, money on the line. They, I mean, it's a big, it's a big deal for them. But there's a lot of other retailers that are around those areas that you see all the time. So if you see, for instance, a Walmart, you'll usually see one of two pizza franchises in the same retail center. Do you think that retail, that pizza franchise did the same demographic study that Walmart did? Probably not. They're a much smaller outfit. But they probably said, where's Walmart going? We're going to go there because we know Walmart knows what they're doing. And uh, and it's going to be a good move for us because it's always been a good move for us. Um, similar thing in real estate. It's seeing the, the, the chess pieces move and what's going on where. And then knowing, okay, this is, the, this is going to be the market. And going there, getting uh, real estate before the, the, before the prices really ratchet up. So that when the prices ratchet up, that's your money. That's your equity that's being ratcheted up. And, and so many people are so distracted and have no idea what's going on in terms of the, the overall market. It's, it's one of those common conversations I have, especially with investors, uh, people who are looking to buy rental properties, whether short-term, long-term, um, is you, you have to know what's going on um, in, in different counties that you're looking in. You have to know the areas uh, that, are, uh, that have... Uh, l let's say uh, some some uh, attraction to a uh, broad ra range of audience so that you're not pigeonholed into you know if this one thing changes then you lose uh, you know all your uh, all your your renters your your leases um, all those sorts of things your cap rate changes significantly so all those things um, are significantly impacted by your, your location and if you don't have somebody who knows What's going on as far as locations in Georgia, uh, specifically in North Georgia? Uh, you can always reach out to me. The second thing, and this is probably like no brainer here. If you're buying and you do not have your pre approval status already ironed out, uh, you prepare for heartbreak because there's, there's a lot more buyers than you think there are in the market. And um, a couple simple things you can do to prepare yourself in the pre approval world. One, is if you don't know what your credit score is, you can get that online. Credit Karma is not your credit score. Um, uh, spoiler alert, uh, that's, that's like a, a Zestimate for your house. Just read the fine print. Zillow says on their website, this is not an accurate number for your property. Um, we just wanna sell advertising. So um, I did, did I say that out loud? Get your pre-approval in order um, because a, a couple things you can, you can do to help yourself. One is if you're working with a local lender, which I, highly recommend you work with a local lender and a local lender only because one they have a much better bead on what's going on in the area uh, they two uh, they're generally a little bit more uh, with it in terms of, of uh, appraisals and and property values and things like that in the area and they can help you with some of those uh, those nuances uh, as you need it but but the the, the third one on the the lender the local lender pre-approval is they can usually get you through your initial underwriting before you even put in your first offer. And in this market, as competitive as it is, if you have a pre-approval letter or a pre-qualification letter, everybody calls them kind of different things, that basically says, I put in my information on your, on your loan application and it spit this out. Like, congratulations, that, that's great. It took about 15 minutes. It doesn't mean you can buy that property. Um, if you go through an initial underwriting where the underwriters are looking at your loan values in your application and checking all your stuff in your credit, and then they give you the green light, well, that's a significantly different buying advantage because your agent can and should be presenting that in your offer. Like, hey, we're already through initial uh, underwriting. Everything's good. As a listing agent, that's what I want to hear. I want to, I want to hear you've got proof of funds, you got money ready, you got your you know credit. There's there's no hiccups, there's no red lights, there's no um, reason for delays because everybody ultimately wants they're under contract wants the same thing. We want to be able to close um, as smooth as possible and on time. This is a significant part of being able to get there. And if you've got uh, multiple offers, if you've got five offers, and only one or two of you have gone through the initial underwriting process, you're probably the only two getting con uh, considered out of those five. Because if the agent knows what they're doing, they're going to be asking that question. I ask that on every pre-approval we get. Have they been through initial underwriting? If I don't get a firm yes from the lender, that tells me they haven't. And, uh, and I tell my clients that. I, I want them to make informed decisions. Number three. 
If you have anybody in the North Georgia market that is giving you advice to hunker down, this is the cleanest way I can give you an expression to respond to them. The North Georgia area is one of the hottest growing markets in, uh, in the country, uh, specifically in the state. And it is not slowing down. There, the, 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 the hunker down here, uh, there's no hunker down. It is, it is full speed ahead. Some of this right now, some of the, 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 the market uh, speed and the acceleration and those sorts of things, quite frankly, to me, feels a lot of like just trying to get to land first. It, remi it reminds me, it reminds me, uh, like I was there. Uh, it reminds me of when people were, were initially settling uh, the United States and it was just like, you know, a wagon race to, to get your land. It was a land grab. This is kind of what it feels like right now in North Georgia because so many people, one, is beautiful. Uh, two, you have uh, a, a fairly inexpensive market, all things considered, in the country. Um, three, you... Uh, don't get mad at this, but you have a, um, a um, broad government uh, system that is giving people what seems like freedom. It's weird. If you are interested in doing anything in real estate uh, in the North George area and you have somebody in real estate or in your world that is telling you to hunker down and, you know, batten the hatches or whatever, you know, sailors say or Vikings, I don't know. Um, probably avoid that person unless you want to stay where you're at for for a long long time because our market's not going anywhere and like i said in the beginning if you look at what has gone on in uh the emerging markets of 10 20 years ago uh which is you know some of those areas i mentioned don't you wish you had bought land or a property of some sort at that point in time uh we can always refinance the, the sticker price needs to make sense. You need to be able to make sure that you can uh, afford the properties. So don't get it over your head, but at the same time, don't think our market in North Georgia is going anywhere anytime soon. So the last thing is we are doing a fundraiser for Autism Awareness Month, which is the month of April. And for many of you, you know, uh, our son uh, is a, currently six and is on the autism spectrum. He's nonverbal. And uh, we have done a lot of, of different um, therapies and treatments and all sorts of things over the last few years uh, to, to help him. And one of the most helpful things that we've done is a sensory uh, therapy clinic in Norcross called Brain Vive. And what we know is um, everything in, in this world is, is very expensive, and there's a lot of people who just are very thin on margins. So we are doing a t-shirt fundraiser. 100% of the profits from the t-shirt sales are going to provide a scholarship for uh, family or families who cannot afford um, this sort of sensory therapy to be able to get a scholarship so they can take their child. Um, we, we tell people, so we've, we've had adult friends, we've had uh, uh, kids. Um, it, this is not specifically for uh, autism or, or you know, people in the special needs. It helps everybody uh, that goes there um, in different ways. We, have, uh, we were in the clinic this week. Uh, we, there was a family that had driven down from Chattanooga specifically for this treatment. It was a mom and a daughter. Um, neither one was on the autism spectrum, but had different sensory um, um, things going on in their world that this treatment helps people for. So the t-shirts are, there's two options. Uh, one is this, it says different, not less. It says uh, love needs no words. Uh, different, not less, and that is the American Sign Language sign for I love you. And uh, this I pulled out. This is the other design. I Y'all, this is just real life, okay? I, I got I to gotta get back to real estate stuff, so I don't have time to get a clean thing. Uh, this is, our son wore this yesterday. Uh, the, that I believe those are maple syrup or ketchup <laughs> stains at the top. Uh, but it's got it's got the same sign there. And then on the back, it's the sign language letters for love. And it says, love needs no words. If I can help you out in any way, my information is always at the end of every video. You can find me on uh, Google, Facebook, whatever, uh, Jake Moran Realtor. If you go on Google, it's Jake and Amber Moran Realtor. Um, you can read our client reviews if you don't know us uh, and just get, uh, get a good look at us through the eyes of our clients. If we can help you out, we'd love to. Our information is coming up. And always got some outtakes. I know what some of you are thinking. Jake, the background 
doesn't look any different than the last time you made a video. It doesn't. You know why? Because I've been busy in real estate, not interior decorating. So everything is as it should be. Um, our our uh, April, April, we are in April. And um, it, mm, ah, um, there you go. That's real life. Do you want me selling real estate and helping you out or you want me doing laundry? I hate laundry. Don't pick that. North of the perimeter, uh, which is 285, i.e. the worst road in Georgia. Uh, if, if, you're, if Waze is taking you on 285, throw your phone out the window. A 285, which is the worst road in Georgia. Uh, I would not be, like all you guys doing construction on 75, somebody just take a wrecking ball, get rid of 285, we'll, we'll all figure it out. We will get around, uh, it'll probably be better.